So, these nuggets are um, made from chicken, but they're made to um, 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 emulate the taste of like, like non-chicken nuggets. So, these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Let's boost that sound quality. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Emulate the taste of non-chicken nuggets. Dope. Non-chicken nuggets. Non-chicken nuggets. But they're made to emulate the taste of vegan nuggets. Sounds tasty. Hello. Hello. Hi, Kevin. Sana. What's up? What is up? Um, welcome to the audience and to Kevin um, <laughs> to uh, How to Make Interview Podcast with Descript. I'm Christiana. I am the community manager here at Descript, and I'm joined by Kevin, as usual, who is our um, amazing product education manager. Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm so great. I'm realizing how much I want that song from that video. Yeah. So I just listen to it from start to finish. I've only heard it in that capacity in our marketing stuff. So I like that. It's, I like that song. It's a good beat. It's yeah. a good one. Yeah. 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 I love that video. It makes me want chicken nuggets um, every time. True. Also true. But the next hour is not about chicken nuggets. It's about podcasting. So, true, but it could be for a second. What's your dipping sauce that you prefer with chicken nuggets? Great question. I am a loyal ranch person. I am. I'm not from the Midwest. I know that's kind of their thing, um, but I know. I'll, I know there will be haters out there. Yeah, this has Mark been a nice Mark. live stream, but I think uh, <laughs> I think that's it for today. What about you? What's yours? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Obviously, <laughs> uh, for chicken nuggets specifically, not other chicken uh, meals or products, uh, barbecue sauce I really like. And okay. sometimes like a sweet and sour, like sweet chili type thing. But totally. usually like classic barbecue is, is great for me. See, I respect all of those choices. And that's the thing about ranch people. Is we yeah, that is. <laughs> we're inclusive. Um, so ranch people in the chat, let us know. Um, <laughs> sound off, but also tell us tell us what your uh, your dipping sauce is, and maybe tell us about your podcast. Maybe your podcast is about nuggets, um, but <laughs> to, or but it, we're again whatever. Let us know. Um, what I you really hope no script. one from PETA is here also. That just puts us on blast. So, <laughs> Chick Well, the chicken nuggets in that video are plant-based. Oh, that's, that's true. The they whole are. thing that is he's true. trying vegan nuggets. So right. there you go. Right. Yeah. Anyway, I know we're, we're tangenting here. So let's jump into what we're going to cover today um, before anyone says, I thought this was about podcasting. You're right. It is. Um, <laughs> this is what we're going to cover today. Um, so importing and transcribing and recording in Descript, how to correct that transcript, how to edit using the transcript, um, removing those filler words and word gaps, editing using the timeline, Studio Sound, which is our AI um, audio repair feature, adding intros, outros, and music, how to collaborate with other people, and of course, how to get your stuff out of Descript. That's right. If you are in Crowdcast right now, um, use the Ask a Question section for your questions. Our wonderful support friend Marcelo is in there and is ready to answer all, all of your cues that come up along the way. And then use the chat for reactions, commentary, sharing your dipping sauce of choice. Um, and then if we freeze, refresh your browser. Um, but if you're having trouble with Crowdcast, we're also streaming to YouTube right now. Hello to everybody over on YouTube. We see your comments too, so feel free to share those and put your questions there. The session is recorded. All of our sessions are recorded. Um, and we'll send out a link in the follow-up email, and it'll also live on YouTube right after this. So you can go check it out. 
if you need more help, um, check out help.descript.com. And of course, definitely join our Discord community where we have over 12,000 creators hanging out um, and getting help with Descript. And lastly, um, if you are new here or you're currently a free user, we would love to hook you up with Descript Pro for free for a month. You can um, use code interview30 or Restream just added this QR code feature. So I'm going to pull it up here too. If you scan that, it'll send you right to the checkout, which is great. Um, but if you're not, if you don't have your phone handy or you're just focusing, we'll send this all this information in the follow-up email. So no sweat. Christiana, how can someone find the recording uh, to this session? Yeah, so um, in on YouTube, on the Descript YouTube channel, we have a playlist of all of our live events. So you can go check out every event that Kevin and I have ever done, um, which are a lot at this point. So yes, go, ch go check out our, our YouTube channel and you can, you can find them all. Yeah, we definitely recommend if you're going to go back and watch this too, or even live today, have Descript side by side with the recording and just walk through everything with us and pause, start, try things over, rewind. It's really helpful as a kind of walking through guide for interviewing podcasts specifically. Totally. Yes. Could not recommend that more. Um, and someone said, what was that about the Descript community? Let me pull up a new QR code. Um, that will jump you over to the Discord where there's 12,000 creators that are... Um, helping each other with Descript, sharing other creator tips. There's different channels for a lot of our different features, so you can get help there. Um, so yeah, definitely jump in. All right. I think that's that. I think we're ready to jump right in, Kevin. Any Anything you want to say before we, we get into this topic? Just a real quick friendly reminder that though we would love to you know, show you everything Descript can do today, just not in the cards. We're only going to walk through the workflow of an interview podcast in a pretty simple form too. If you want to get deeper into podcasting, check out the Help Center. If you want to get deeper into any other media you might be creating in Descript, check out the Help Center, our YouTube page. Um, but this is not a Descript 101 session where we show off everything Descript can do. So just note that we're going to get through a nice, you know, repeatable workflow for you. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as importing, transcribing, editing, exporting, whatnot. Awesome. Cool. Let's do with, it. With that, let's let's start. Uh, cool. I'm going to go ahead and share your old screen here. If you haven't had a tour of Descript yet, definitely do that before you start working. You want to figure out you know, the right app settings that you want to get set up. If you're an audio or video creator, you'll want to get a little tour of all of the shortcuts and, and whatnot, some account settings, if you click your initials or avatar on the right. But once you've done all that and you know how to organize your drive, perhaps, depending on the type of podcast you're making, or you know how to invite collaborators to your drive or to projects, you're just ready to start working. You Maybe you have a recording that you've done, or you're going to do some recording. Uh, this is where we're going to start. There are kind of three main ways to get stuff, to get media, audio or video into Descript. The first one is you have a recording, you have the files and you drag and drop them in and we're gonna import those. We'll show you that one first. Uh, the second is just recording straight into Descript using our built-in recorder, pretty awesome. Not the best for remote interviews, however. So we love to use tools like Squadcast or Riverside and they are dedicated specifically to remote interviews. Um, a lot of folks use Zoom as well, also in that same ballpark, but just less feature rich, we would call it. Tools like Squadcast allow you to just like create a, a private link. You can see who you're speaking with, really high quality audio, really high quality video, no matter what you're making. Uh, it's awesome to start with video files these days because you can repurpose that for social or do whatever you want or just, you know, leave it there forever. Uh, in Descript, though, we make it very easy to switch back and forth between a video and audio mode, depending on what you're working on. So if your main piece of media, your main content that you're making is just an audio podcast that you're going to publish and put out into the world, that's awesome. But we would still implore you to bring in video files to edit from, from the beginning. Because you might want to create an Instagram or a TikTok or YouTube later on 
And having those visuals will make it even more engaging. So number one, we talked about, we have some files already and we're gonna bring those in. We're gonna click new project in the top right hand corner and we could start by any of these prompts or you can drag and drop those files in. Uh, when we get to talking briefly about tools like Squadcast, uh, we have a built-in integration. So this whole process of downloading your files, taking up hard drive space, re-importing them, that whole thing is eliminated. It's called the Edit and Descript, and it takes it from their cloud to our cloud, drops it in, creates a nice project for you. However, a lot of us just have files that we've used, whether we're recording in person or remotely, whatever it might be. And we're just going to import those files like this. So you're going to choose files to transcribe or drag and drop them in. You won't be able to see this because of my screen sharing limitations here. But what I'm doing is we're going to start with audio files first, and then we'll go to video just to show how similar it will look. I'm going to go in and pull in the audio files from this interview. It's an interview kind of round table between three people. And I'm going to bring these files in together at the same exact time. So I'm selecting these three files. And what's that, what that will do is sync them together so that we can still see one script and one timeline once it's all finished. But under the hood in the background, we'll have three separate files. Or if it's a one-on-one -on -one interview, it'll be two separate files. These files are all synced beforehand because we record them using one of those tools. Um, so just note that. All right, so I'm selecting these three files on my computer. I'm gonna click transcribe. You can decide if you want this to prompt all the time or not. And you're gonna add speaker labels for each file. Hover over these files if you need to see the full name too. So these are going to import, they're going to combine into a multi-track sequence, which is that under the hood behind the scenes pairing that we talked about. Click done. And now we have one script and one timeline for this whole interview. Three different speakers. We have a nice transcription of what they said, and we can go through and edit. So here is the power of Descript real quick. I really want to talk about your favorite Halloween candies. Mine personally is uh, Reese's peanut butter cups. Those are those are definitely my favorite. What about what about you guys? Okay, some repeated words. We can choose to manually remove these. The beauty of Descript is you can edit the text and it will edit the underlying audio and or video. Candies. Mine personally is Reese's peanut butter cups. Those are those are definitely my favorite. You could also use our feature, which is in the magic menu here. It's a great first step. Remove filler words. In this case, there's a lot of us, ums, repeated words. So by clicking these, this magic menu up here, these stars, I can choose all those. So maybe I go us, ums, you knows, and repeated words, maybe. Actually, like is a good one for them, too. And cool. I can press apply to all. It'll delete all those from my transcript and my timeline. I won't hear them anymore. I won't see them. could also choose to use this ignore feature. This is a big unlocker early on in your podcasting editing in Descript is using our ignore feature, which strikes through the text, removes the audio and video, if there's video there, but we can see the edits that we've made. I'll show you what that looks like. I'm gonna click apply to all. Great, so those are all removed. Get out of this. Now here's what we got. Halloween candies. Mine personally is Reese's peanut butter cups. Those are definitely my favorite. What about you guys? All right, so just from there, it's much more cleaned up. Uh, we've removed this repeated phrase, this uh, another repeated phrase. If you wanted to bring one back, you can just highlight it and click the ignore button again in our script toolbar here. You can see it's highlighted in blue, and that'll just bring those words back, and we'll hear them. Peanut butter cups, those are, those are definitely my favorite. So a really amazing way to go through and edit your media, edit your interview, but still have the option to bring different words and phrases back that you've already edited out and removed.
The same goes for just flat out editing an interview is when you're going through, instead of deleting the text and removing that audio, you can strike through some stuff and it will bring it back as you need. Kevin, from more of like a craft perspective, when you're editing podcasts, what do you find is like your preferred level of those filler words that you actually end up bringing back? Ooh. Sound off in the chat yeah, uh, I'm curious. if you're an existing editor of any kind. For me personally, this is a hot debate, but for <laughs> me personally, I think I bring back probably like 20% of them mm -hmm. for – Depending on the show, it really depends on your use and your output. But for most of the interview-based stuff that I work on, yeah, it's like I probably bring back 20%. But this process saves me that 80% of doing it manually. So for right. me, I'm, I'm going to remove them all, and then I'll just bring back the ones that I know I really want that will help the conversation, make them sound less scripted and perfect. Totally. Um, keep their humanity intact. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, now I'm going to like listen to my different podcasts with like an ear for who's leaving in the filler words. Mm -hmm. Like the, like the, I listen to like a news show every morning, like up first, no filler words. Zero. Right. Zero. But like Especially so daily own. shows when they have like 20 minutes to get all right. the information. Got in. it. Totally. So it really just depends on what you're talking about, I guess. That's right. That's cool. right. Cool. All right. Let, let's do another import. We're going to, that's that's the meat and potatoes of of Descript right there. It's so important to talk about editing early on because that's going to frame up how we craft our show. Um, I do want to bring in some video. So this is what it looks like with audio only. Pretty great. We got our full script, nice speaker labels that were labeled out because we added those in. This timeline here is resizable. You can zoom in and out by pinching and pulling on a trackpad or using command or control with a mouse wheel, all good. Looks very, very nice. It's gonna look the same when we create a video as well. So I'm gonna go up to our compositions list quick. It's gonna look the same, except we're gonna have a video pane, which we call the canvas, and we're gonna have a scenes rail for all of our scene cards, S-C-E-N-E. -E. Uh, and we'll get into what those, what those mean too when we talk about video editing, perhaps later on, but the core of this, we're just going to get through this conversation and interview style stuff. Okay, so bringing in videos is going to be the same process. In this case, within this project, I'm going to go to our compositions list and create a new composition right here. So we got our, our version of a doc. It'll give me that same empty state that we did when we created the project at first, but now I'll have two different ones. And this is going to be video. Actually, and Ryan. Same process. Choose my files to transcribe or drag and drop them in. I'll drag and drop them in this time. Even though I know, I'm sorry, you cannot see it. We'll take part two of this interview, but video. So I'm taking these three MP4 files. They're synced, ready to go. And I'm just going to drag them and drop them in together at the same time. Transcribe, same process. I'll add my speaker labels. I already added them, so they're saved for me, which is nice. They're going to be combined into a multi-track sequence, which we'll show you this time. It's that original pairing of these three files under the hood in the background. And when you add video to an audio composition, we'll talk about one second, we have this nice pop-up so I can switch between video and audio as I need. So because I added video files, I'm going to switch to video, and it's going to look like this with a nice video canvas that we can resize and our scenes that we can resize as well. If you need to switch back and forth between audio and video mode for a specific edit, a specific composition, you can go to the Descript D up here, go to File, and Set composition to audio only and I'll switch it back look exactly like the other one that was audio only same thing here awesome Kevin someone in the chat asked what does it mean when your files are synced yeah let's show let's show that cool 
So the, just the terminology in your work and your workflow and the phrases when you're, when you're using them, talking to folks, uh, a sync of multiple files just means they have the same start time in history. If that makes if that makes sense, meaning when you press record and you have three people on a call or something, they all have the same start time of that recording. The file starts at the same time. So when right. in this case, Ashley asks a, asks a question, Ramdi hears it and responds. In our files, we're going to see that response. In Descript, we represent that in our sequence. So you can right click in the timeline or the script, you can also double click in the script, all these different ways to get to the sequence. And this lives in the background under the hood. And we have three separate files here, Ryan, Ramdi, and Ashley. And you can see they all have the same start point and end point. And when Ashley finished asking that question. Or uh, going swimming. Why don't we start with you, Ramdi? Yeah, um, I used to swim all the time. Uh, Everything's synced and ready to go. So there's three separate files, one for each speaker. Got it. Cool. So it's really like a key to having a good editing experience is making sure all of those are synced up. Oh, yeah. If you're yeah. working with files that weren't synced to the same recording start time, which can happen sometimes uh, if you're doing what we call a tape sync, which is where you have a maybe like a Zoom call or something that you're all talking to each other, but you're all recording in your own space. And you might press record at a slightly different time or you're recording different file types. Imagine getting to work on this and Ramdi's response is like way further away from Ashley's question. Or on the inverse, imagine Ramdi's question started before Ashley was done. Right. So that's what unsynced or not synced files would look like. Got it. Yeah. Great to just avoid once the once your files are synced and then brought into uh, Descript, leaving this leaving this be this sequence. There's only really one reason, maybe two reasons to come to the sequence when you're working. It's to remove crosstalk or change crosstalk. That's when people are speaking on top of each other. You can move that around or mute it or whatever you need to do. We'll hopefully get into that a little bit. And also remove background noise from one person's microphone and not the other folks. Because all of the edits that we do back in the composition, those edits are done to the entire interview as a, a combined interview. Any edits that we make in the sequence are only going to be done to the specific track that we're editing. So if you've ever used a different editor of any kind, you're probably used to this kind of view where you have one track per speaker. But in Descript, we like to have this available to you, but make it way easier by seeing one script that represents the entire conversation or entire edit. Awesome. Cool. All right. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about swimming because a lot of people so a question that a lot of folks ask too when we start editing is when are you going to delete things and when are you going to strike them out ignore them uh for the most part i'm going to ignore everything but sometimes there's a word i know right here i'm not going to use this yeah i want the conversation to start with i really want to talk about so i could just delete this yeah i really wanted to talk about swimming and now we have a nice clean start to our interview so everything that we do with the text cut, copy, paste is also going to do to the attached audio and video. So if you want to rearrange sections, you can cut, copy, paste just like a doc. If you want to remove full sections or put this section in a different episode or anything like that, just cut, copy, or paste between compositions or between projects. It's always going to keep your audio and video synced and attached and good to go. So you never have to worry about that. In the script, there's also a couple other things we might think about doing. One is making corrections to the transcript. Perhaps we're going to use video later on, or perhaps our core product is video that we're making, and we need accurate captions, or we might publish this page to a web link. We want to have an accurate transcript next to it. 
really awesome feature of Descript we'll get into. But as you're going, you might want to make some small corrections. So what you can do is highlight a word, phrase, or sentence, click this correct button or use C on your keyboard, and just type what you want it to say. No spaces, press return or click correct. And now it's just going to change what's in the script without affecting the audio or video. I know my parents took me to the YMCA. Just like that. So another great way to just continue work, get really accurate transcripts, A, because it'll make editing easier, and B, accessibility and captioning for later on. Awesome. Cool. Kevin, someone in the chat asked if this works with Spanish audio. Do you want to talk really quickly about the different languages we support? Yeah, we'd love to. So dropping in, we offer 20... Three different languages, is it, Christiana? That is right. Wow. Okay. 23 different languages. And when you drop a file in, in a different language, if you have this prompt set up or you set up your settings for a specific language, you can choose that drop down here. Awesome. This one's in Portuguese, but yeah, whatever of these languages that you need. transcribe for you. Our dear friend, Ronaldo. <laughs> <laughs> and you click done. And that'll come out for Sweet. you. It is one language per file. So note that if you have English and Spanish, for instance, in a single file, it won't transcribe that very well. Uh, you have to pick one language per file. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Let's go back. Christiana, are there any other uh, good questions we could hit real quick before we move forward into some timeline stuff? Totally. Let's take a look here. Um, this is a good one. If you switch to audio only mode and make a change in the audio only mode, does it change the video too? Yes. Okay. Yes. So. If you want that to happen, amazing. <laughs> if you don't want that to happen, go into your compositions list and right click the one that we have open or whichever one and duplicate it. And you can make an audio version and a video version just like that. You can make as many compositions as you want, as many versions of this short clips, short snippets, montage, compilation, like whatever makes sense, as well as obviously full edits, audio, video, whichever. Awesome. Cool. Um, next one, filler words question. When we take out filler words, it sounds very choppy and edited. Is there a way to make it sound more natural? Great question. Uh, bring back the ones that sound choppy. Mm -hmm. Usually people use filler words directly attached to other words, which no matter what program or editor you're using, it makes that very difficult to edit and sound natural. So if you do run filler word removal. Using that strikeout feature, ignore, is going to help you out a lot. Bringing back the ones, that's a, the easiest thing, is like, you know what, this sounds too choppy. You just double click it and unignore it or use that keyboard shortcut. And this kind of segues really nicely into the timeline use. So the timeline is where we go to make any precision or fine-tuned edits. So let's see what we got here. But I know that it happened. And, but not everybody learns. Okay. Jumpy edit. Great example right there. It's just like a breath and a blah, blah, blah. So you might go down in the timeline and nudge some stuff around using your eyes, using your ears to make those changes. So this takes some practice. And if you're new to editing, this might feel like a lot, but start it sooner so you can feel like you have that power uh, to make the decisions for your, your content. The big thing for cleaning up edits that you've made in the script, in the timeline, if you're working with audio only, let me go back to an audio only one real quick. We'll do that same process. If you're working in audio only, you can click and drag these word tabs to remove silence. You can also click and drag them to add 
AI generated room tone it makes it just makes it sound like they actually stopped talking. So it's like a piece of audio that replicates their mic sound when no one's speaking. And you can do a lot there. In video, if I move that to the right, that just gives us a blank frame. So we don't want we don't want that. But the moving them to the left will always work. In addition to using these word tabs in the timeline to just kind of like get our pacing and timing right, if you hover over any edit points, this is, the, this is the big one, this is the one to practice, on either side of an edit point, you can expand or collapse the edit that you've made. So what that means is we didn't remove this word forever, it's just kind of hiding, and you can peel back that layer so it's just kind of like you took a piece of paper, you cut it, and now it, they overlap. So what I can do is expand and collapse this a little bit to get that smoother. And the thing that I'm looking for with smoothness are these waveforms, these shapes. You can see there's a little bit of a shape right there that represents the audio. It's called waveform. The same thing right here at the beginning of this word. So I might go in and move these. This is kind of this is definitely more a craft thing is making your edits so they don't happen in the middle of a waveform, one of these shapes. Because that's when you get that choppiness and like the audio immediately cuts out or immediately starts. So if you can make a lot of your audio edits, especially in these flat spaces, it'll sound really, really nice. Let me go back to this video one and show you that in, in real time. So you can see there's a breath right here. You can also hear it. Happened. And it goes right there. And then you can see here there's an edit point while Ashley's already kind of starting to say this word and ending this word. So I'm just clicking and dragging this around. And I'm going to use my eyes and ears to make some better decisions. Happened. And cool. So the breath, I want that to sound nice and clear. So I'm just going to drag this so it's not being cut off in the middle of the breath, but after the breath and before the next word. Happened. And much smoother. And the same thing here, this might take one or two tries, but I could try going closer to that word. And, but not everybody learns. That sounds pretty good. I could also go back a little bit and pull this word back in. You know, but not everybody learns. So another decision, I might just use a script or the timeline to bring something back. So that it doesn't sound over edited and kind of, yeah, synthesized in a way. And it's really just dependent, dependent on your audio. It's all dependent on your audio. Connected words, how many filler words they use. Totally. That. Cool. That was awesome. Nice. Cool. Okay. Um, do you think we should keep trudging just so we hit everything and we can grab more questions at, at the end? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Cool. Let's do it. So you brought in some media. Oh, we should talk about the last one really quick. The other, the last way of bringing in media <laughs> Descript, we obviously dropping some files in, importing, transcribing. We talked about edit and Descript with Squadcast, Riverside, and others. But let's make a new composition and just record. Awesome. You can also just record straight into Descript. You can record audio inputs, Camera and audio, screen camera and audio. It's amazing. For this one, I'm just going to do some audio real quick to show you this. Up on a speaker label. Make sure it's going to transcribe by clicking these little lines here. And I'm also going to run Studio Sound, which is our voice enhancement feature. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> All right. Welcome, let me do this again. Hello and welcome to this episode of my podcast. So great to be here. My guest today is Christiana and we're going to talk about plant-based nuggets. You push stop, it's going to transcribe and import for you and you can record straight in. Good to go just like that. <clears throat> All right. Welcome. Let me do this again. So much stuff. In this case, I might do, do this in the timeline while I'm waiting, or when the transcription is done, I could just remove it. Hello, and welcome to this episode of my podcast. So, oh, let's see, this is me messing up as I transcribed it in the wrong language because we did Portuguese. Uh, 
<laughs> our nu- our nugget podcast is in Portuguese. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curveball. Yep. yep. Surprise. <laughs> cool. All right. So that'll go for us. So great way to record directly in. So if you're doing narration and you need to do pickups and make some changes, pretty awesome. Super cool. But Kevin, you would, at the moment, you wouldn't recommend, a lot of people are historically in the chats, people say, so should I be recording my podcast in Descript? And you would recommend that folks use something else with it, multiple people. Yeah. If it's in okay. person, heck yeah. Right in Descript. Cool. You can drop in, if you have an, an interface or an audio device that has multiple inputs, you can do that. Cool. Add inputs for sure. If it's remote, definitely go with ones like Squadcast. They just they do it so well and it's super easy um, and you get the highest possible audio and video and it's really easy for the other folks. The other one I would say is like obviously if you're recording straight in, look at that. If you're recording straight in, <laughs> uh, it's just you. Maybe your podcast is just a solo scripted or unscripted monologue. Yeah, record straight into Descript. Definitely cool. do video, but no matter what you do, um, just so you have it in in the back catalog there. But yeah, sweet, cool. Let's Love go it. back. Okay, we're gonna keep trucking along per your request, Christiana. <laughs> so just the timekeeper, glorified you, timekeeper over here. <laughs> far more than that, we all know. We all know. <laughs> So there's some other things in the timeline we can talk about that are going to make your podcast sound much better and more pro and just give you the tools to make the changes that you want. When I joined the swim team in high school, freshman year, my first practice. You can see there's a little bit of a gap here. I might want to remove that. Easiest way, boom, 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 click and drag this word tab and it removes that space. When I joined the swim team in high school, freshman year, my first practice was. Or you can also use our timeline tools down here. And you can use the range tool, which allows you to select a range of audio and video in the timeline and remove it by clicking delete. So similar process. The range tool is really great for removing things like breath and mouth noise and all kinds of stuff. Me and my cousin, we're just too poor. There we go. I might want to just remove that. Me and my cousin, we're just too poor. Maybe I want some more space back in. That's when I can go back to that word tab and drag it. Me and my cousin, we're just too. And you can see there, that's when we lose that video. So decisions that we're making with audio and video might not always be the same. Let's see that one more time in the video canvas. Me and my cousin. It's just a blank frame right there. So we could add a freeze frame or we could just say, actually, that's not the move and keep that in. Let's go back up to our, our magic menu here and talk about some things that are going to help our editing process. One is shorten word gaps. This allows us to pick a certain amount of time as our target and shorten all of the instances of that empty space in our interview down to a different amount of time. So I could say any space or silence that is one second or more, I'm going to shorten it to one second. So anything that's three or four seconds is going to be shortened down. You can see them all listed here. Boom, boom, boom. There's one that's three, 1.4, 2.2. So if I use a setting like this, the longest pause that I'm going to have in this interview is going to be one full second. I can apply to all. It's going to snap all those down just like that. So really awesome if you, you <laughs> or your guests take some nice liberal pauses as they're going. So we got filler, filler word removal, removal of shorting, shorting the word gaps. Um, another thing we're not going to do right now is detecting transcription errors. Incredibly powerful tool to get a more accurate transcript. You will, it'll, it'll run your audio and video through another round of transcription and compare the two results and tell you a few places where we think we got it wrong. So better captions, more accurate transcript for accessibility and editing. Good to go. Awesome. Kevin, what are your tips for getting a good transcript before you even 
stick the audio into Descript? How can, how can people set themselves up for success? Oof, good one. I mean, audio is everything. Audio is always, always important. So getting really high quality audio or the highest quality that you or your guests have access to is number one. Could be a voice memo on your phone. It could be a really nice broadcast mic. It could be a USB mic. It could be just a built-in mic on a computer. Mm -hmm. um, just making sure that you have good audio, the best, uh, so that includes the, the best mic that you or they have access to in a quiet space, if that's what you're going for. Um, you can always add environmental sounds in if you want to later on, uh, but a nice quiet space that doesn't make it sound like they're in something else. So like not in a kitchen that's echoey or reverberant um, yeah. or not in a tiny closet with no clothes in it. So it sounds like you're in an actual box, um, right. soft spaces, those kinds of things. Cool. But I think the last thing we talk about all the time is our transcription glossary. You just go to Descript D file transcription glossary and just put in words that you think or you're observing Descript getting wrong uh, and it will keep an eye and an ear out for those and try to get them right next time. Love it. Cool. Sweet. I'm going to add studio sound really quick. It's up here in our audio effects. And it's going to add it to each of these files. I'm going to let that process. It might take a minute or so and do some other stuff. Studio Sound is our voice enhancement feature that is amazing. You're, you'll, you'll hear it in a second. Uh, if you have headphones handy or you're not wearing them, you might want to throw those on. Or if you're watching this uh, recording, put on, pause us and put some headphones on so you can hear the, the impact of Studio Sound. While that's going, I'm going to talk really quickly. Since we have some video open, we're going to talk about changing the look and just its overall vibe of this video, which these three boxes, you know, they look great, three of them, but it's just not going to be as aesthetically pleasing probably as we want to for a final output. So a couple different options here. We could do it manually. We could use scenes, which we're not going to talk about a whole lot about today. Uh, they come in less in play when we're doing interview video-based work. Um, so you could add a scene every time you want to change the layout. So if you want Ashley to be active, you could add a scene, blow up Ashley's video, remove the other ones and bring them back in for other scenes. It's basically a way to, uh, like organize your visuals for different sections of the video, but we can also change the orientation real quick. If it was kind of cut and dry. So we go, you know, into portrait for instance. And I could move these around, resize them how I want to. And just by that quick change, this is kind of like set and ready for something like Instagram or TikTok or YouTube shorts. Simple as that. I'm going up to this menu if I want to change the orientation of the canvas. Go to square, go to portrait, landscape, all good. I'm going to undo. Ooh, if you don't use the undo button while you're editing, <laughs> start now. Is command or control Z. If you do anything or in this case, any things that you want to undo, command or control Z and it'll work you backwards so you can retry. It's my best friend. Mm -hmm. For yeah, sure. Also, as you're talking about, like, you just made a great video for TikTok, for example. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin and I next week are doing a whole event on making shareable clips for social from your long form content. So I'm going to send that link in the in the chat and we'll spend an hour talking about that topic by itself. So definitely, if you're interested in that and you're thinking about how to promote your podcast, that would be like a perfect, perfect next event for you. Mm. Love it. That'd be great. That was a fun one. We're going to use this feature to make this look really great with two clicks. So every time the speaker changes, I want them to be full screen. 
and I don't want to see the other people who are not speaking. So I'm going to go up to our magic menu again right here, and I'm going to choose Add Scenes by Active Speaker. And what that's going to do is going to create a scene for every speaker change. If you want to learn more about scenes, check out our YouTube and Help Center. But it's very intuitive, very easy. Uh, I'm going to add a scene by Active Speaker. So what that's going to do, like I said, it's going to create a scene for every speaker change, but then it's also going to automatically full screen that speaker on our canvas. So just by clicking this, we have all of these different scenes when we have a speaker change. And I can edit these scenes with their underlying audio and video independently from the rest of the video. So if I have a scene selected and I make any visual changes, say I add a shape or some stock media from our library here, whatever that might be, it's only going to edit where that go. Oh, it went away. That dancing bear. Anything we add, it's only going to add it to this little scene and not the rest of the video. I enjoyed the meets, but practices were terrible. What about you, Ryan? I wish I could remember. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so any visual changes, just trying to drive that home, any visual changes that we make to a single scene, it won't happen to the rest of the video unless we tell the script to do that, which is what we're going to do next with captions. Awesome. Cool. But before we do that, headphone time, let's listen to some studio sound. You honestly will be able to hear it without headphones if you don't have them handy, so, so no worries. Um, I'm going to go into the sequence real quick, double click in the timeline. And... Okay, cool. I know Ryan was like typing early on as a, as a test. So I'm gonna turn studio sound off real quick. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about swimming because- And I'm gonna solo Ryan's tracks. So we only hear him. Like moving around, doing all this stuff. I'm gonna turn studio sound back on. So it gets rid of that. We don't hear any of that. Great, but how does it really impact Ryan's voice? So here's Ryan without studio sound. I wish I could remember. I have a really bad childhood memory. I can't remember anything before like six. I'm one of those people, but I have like flashes. I think they're all from childhood. And here he is with studio sound on. I wish I could remember. I have a really bad childhood memory. I can't remember anything before like six. I'm one of those people, but nice and cleaned up. Sounds like he's literally in a studio. Let's do the same thing with Ashley and Ramdi. I'll keep Ryan on for a sec. Actually, no, I'll, I'll turn him off because he's got some background noise. So without studio sound. Man. Hey. Yeah. You just if something if something tries to kill was, you, you just like keep going. <laughs> it, if, it was yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the meets, but practices were terrible. Mm. What about you, Ryan? I wish I could remember. Okay, like roomy sounding for some of them. A lot of background noise. You can hear like someone's air, maybe their computer fan. I turn studio sound back on for each of them. Man. Hey. Yeah. You just if something if something tries to kill was, you, you just like keep going. <laughs> See it, if, it was yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoyed the meets, but practices were terrible. Mm. Cleaned up really nicely. It's wild. It's, it's blows my mind every time still. I know. Same. So good. So good. Okay, cool. Um I'm, 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 I'm going to pause real quick. We're getting close-ish to time, and I want to make sure we hit some questions uh, that I'm sure you've been sitting on, Christiana. Totally. Cool. Um, let me get hit you with a studio sound question because we're on okay. it right now. Um, Marika asked, in terms of workflow, when, when would you recommend we use studio sound? Other edits first or studio sound 
well, studio sound help us save time if we do that first. Like cutting out background noise, I think they're asking about maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. If you're going to use Descript from the beginning to the absolute end of your workflow, turn studio sound on early, get everybody sounding good, and then go and do your edits. If you're someone that uses our timeline export where you do 80%-ish of your workflow in Descript, all your edits and arrangement, whatnot, and then export to one of these tools, maybe for sound design or effects or adding, you know, like doing scoring or anything like that. Um, that's entirely up to you. For me, when I use this workflow, I, I turn studio sound on towards the end because I like to blend studio sound with um, the mix of their, their voice that I do in one of these tools. So two different ways. Awesome. Cool. And then for other questions, I'm actually seeing some patterns. So maybe we can hit these next two things in the time cool. that we have left. Love um, pattern. one, I love patterns. One is folks are asking about um, intro music and outros and how to, how to add that in and maybe doing fade ins and fade outs. Um, and then the second one is adding elements, like some folks were asking about logos or captions, which I think you're going to show us. So mm -hmm. maybe we hit those two things. Those are huge. Intros are so easy. Um, so as we remember to create space in our edit, we use the timeline and we're going to click and drag the very first word tabs to the right to give us some empty space. So it might be like five seconds, something like that. If we're working with video, that gives us a blank frame. Amazing, good to go. If we're working with audio, it's just going to give us silence. So same process, however many seconds of silence. And then you can add your intro. So maybe you have a pre-recorded intro that's ready to go. You're going to slap that on. Or you have intro music. In this case, I'm going to go up to our media library and pull in some audio. Meeting with the sun. That's the one for today. I'm just going to drag and drop it in where I want it to go. In this case, right at the beginning. And now I have. I really wanted to talk about. If you want to add some more space, you can just click and drag it further. I really wanted to talk about. And the other thing you can add with music, which is so cool, go to audio effects, dynamics, and ducking. And it will automatically reduce the music volume when your voices come in. I added it to the wrong track. <laughs> You're just making sure we're paying attention. Ha <laughs> ha. I'm yeah. adding ducking to the script, not to this one. Uh, so I'm going to go to select the script or click in the script and choose ducking and now we're good. I really wanted to talk about swimming because a lot of people learn to swim when they're very young. So the music's nice in the background. That's a great one. That's one. If you're going to record an intro, which a lot of folks will do, just create a new line. And if it's video... You can create a new scene also, but just create a new line and record straight in. Record your intro, blah, blah, blah. You do that full intro. Then you drop the music just like we did onto that and continue your edit that way. Awesome. But yeah, using that to create space will hook you up for an intro. Changed the whole vibe of the video. It's really right. amazing what a little background music will do. That's right. This conversation was pretty epic and inspiring. Uh, meeting with the sun. <laughs> that's the, that's the goal. It was quite <laughs> very epic and inspiring. Yeah. Love it. Cool. Um, someone asked, are we allowed to upload like our own music? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You just, same can. process. Drag and drop it from your computer. So I have giant music library on my computer i can just drag and drop it in put it where i want it and it'll do the same thing for me cool i really wanted to talk about 
cool. Sweet. And then is that process for the fade in the same as the fade out? Some folks were asking about that. Yeah, that's a good one. So the fade in, we didn't, which we didn't do, uh, is clicking, it's the same for fade out, is clicking these cool. white bubbles to fade in. Or if this is shorter, we're going to click and drag the end of this to stop it where we want. We can fade out by clicking and dragging that bubble as well. Cool. Give us a nice gradual fade out. Awesome. And someone asked, is this only in the video editing mode? And no, you're doing that to an audio file. So you can fade in and out on audio, but you also can on videos, right? Absolutely. Yeah. I get to the end. I want to fade that out. I could add a nice fade, or let me delete some of this real quick, because that's not what we want to fade. We want to fade the actual end. Same thing, we can just fade it out like that. And then exactly. Right. Or we could always add uh, a transition to the scene. So you could go to the last scene and add a transition out, so then you could do a nice little fade out. So when you get to the end, it'll fade out for you. Love it. So check that out in the scenes. Uh, discovery stuff if you're working with video. Sweet. Should we do adding elements really quick in the final couple couple minutes? Maybe adding some captions or a logo or something like that? Yeah. Cool. So let's start with captions. Captions are so easy. You go up to text. In our insert toolbar up here, the T for text, and you click captions, and it's going to drop those captions in. By default, when you add any visual, and you're working with video here, it's going to add your visual to the scene that you're in. So you decide, ideally beforehand, or it could be after, where you want that to start and where you want it to end, that visual. In this case, I want these captions to go from the beginning to the end. So what I might do instead, is use Command or Control A on my keyboard to select all, like so. It's going to select the whole script. And I go up to Captions again, and it's going to drop in that visual on the selection that I've made. So now those captions start at the beginning and go all the way to the end. Don't worry, though. If you forget to do that and you drop in captions only in one scene, you can use the timeline down here to extend the captions clip to the end, just like that. And if you're wondering where your clips are in the timeline ever, you can toggle between these two buttons to show all of your clips, layers, or just the one that you have selected. And then you just make your changes. You can do Tons and tons of stuff with captions, font, custom font, custom colors, hex RGB code, whatever it might be. Um, and we make it really, really easy. Having our asthma attacks. So that was bad. I remember <laughs> that that was like, Ramdy. Just whenever there was a pool, I was like super eager to get into it. So cool. And you got captions. Same thing awesome. goes for visuals. If you're working and you want to drop in a visual somewhere. You see Ryan has a really bad childhood memory. So I'm going to create a scene. I'm going to select this script, create a scene. There we go. And now I'm going to drop in uh, a visual. I'm going to go up to our, our media library here and look for keyword maybe. <laughs> yeah, perfect. I'm going to drop that visual in just by clicking it, and it's going to put it into the active scene that I have, and I could rearrange these how I want to. Check out our video editing stuff to learn how I just did some of this canvas work. But dropping a scene is truly just dragging and dropping or clicking from our media library up here. And it'll drop that right in. I wish I could remember. I have a really bad childhood memory. I can't remember anything before. <laughs> just like that. Awesome. Cool. Sorry, I couldn't find my unmute button for a second there. Um, 
Great. Sweet. Okay. We just covered a ton of ground. Um, anything actually there, if out of all of the questions, I'm going to, I'm going to pull this one up for you, Kevin, before we please, leave, please. Uh, best way to learn everything about Descript. Where do people go to continue, continue learning? Three places. Okay. Three places. Well, Number I guess one. it's technically four, but it, they're combined into one. One of them is our YouTube page, which includes these events. We do them every week. They're great. We also have all the recordings of them there, plus a bunch of other videos. So our YouTube page. The others are Help Center, help.descript.com, or clicking this question mark. Go to the Help Center. And three is our Discord that Christiana manages so well. And there's just so many people in there, a lot of great opinions and expertise and experience that you can bounce ideas off of or learn more from. It's just, they're, they're really, really awesome. Uh, it's a great, great community. So Discord, Help Center, YouTube. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, we do these every week. Um, and we switch off between doing a general Descript 101, so everything you could possibly want to learn about Script, um, and then a more niche event like this. So let us know in the comments what other types of events would you like, because um, we, we would love to take your requests. Um, and yeah, but this was amazing. Thank you for so many amazing questions. Um, there's a, Marcelo, thank you for answering 50 plus in the ask a question section, our hero as usual. Um, Marcelo does weekly office hours in Discord, so check those out. Um, I've got the QR code up there for, for our um, Discord community. You can just scan that. Yeah. Um, and once again, yeah, if, if you're new here, if you're using Descript for free right now on the free plan, um, and we, we modeled some of the features that are available with Pro. Scan that code, give it a try for free for a month, um, see how you do. And yeah, we would love to just help you get your feet wet there. So um, this has been amazing. Thank you all so much for being here. Kevin, thank you for being an amazing host as usual. Hey, you too. Glad to be here. It's been a blast. It's been such a blast. Um, we love podcasters. Um, we would love to continue supporting you in, in your work. So let us know how we can continue doing that. Um, but yeah, don't be afraid. Shamelessly plug your, your podcast below and um, so keep supporting each other. Awesome. Okay. Well, without further ado, Kevin, I think it's, I think it's time that we, we sign off. All righty. Thanks, everybody. Right. We'll see you next Thanks, time. Thanks, everyone. See ya.